So I'm thinking I want to take this boring little coffee maker, this is one of those K-cup type coffee makers, and turn this into something more interesting, something maybe steampunk or Victorian looking. So what I'm going to do is I want to add some effects to this, and I picked up some different things like PVC pipe that maybe I could mount on the side of it, and I want to take a 2 inch ID uh, piece of PVC tubing. I can mount this to the end or the edge of that, cut it down to the height I want, make an opening to where you could take these K-cups out. This is a 2 inch piece and it fits it perfectly. So, but I think for starters, I want to mount one onto the side over here and so I'm going to need to cut this down to fit these, sand it down, and I think I'll start out by gluing it down. I'm using this PVC cement, and I'm hoping that'll adhere to this as well, and that's why I want to uh, experiment with it first. How did I set up that quick? I don't know. Whew. That's not how I want that to go at all. Hold on. We did that set up fast. And I don't think I can <laughs> unstick that. Boy. Well. Here we go again. Maybe not so much glue this time. Move. <laughs> All right. I think I can live with that, even though the hump is a little crooked. You won't see it on the side, and it could actually look like I intended it to be that way. Now, then, my next big question is, can I glue it? Whoops. Can I glue it to this? Yeah, probably facing that way. Glue it to that. And will it stick? So let's find out. This will be the... Well, that didn't stick. I don't see it affecting this, per se. As I'm going to try some of this uh, Starbond. It's a like a super glue. And I'm going to try seeing if that would work to uh, glue this PVC to plastic. And I think I'll try that like right here. And I'm just going to dust this with a real light coat. And I'm setting it on right there. That's not going to work either. That just popped right off of that. So, okay, i got to rethink it a little bit. Okay, so I've tried two different glues, and neither of them have worked on this. So now I'm going to resort to using hot glue. I'm not real happy about this because this could be whether I make this video or not but I'm gonna try hot glue on this and we'll see how well that works. Probably hot glue is all the little spider hairs. Well it looks like it bit better than anything else I've tried so I think I'll I'll use it on this next and see how that does. Okay, and right there. Okay, I think I 
think that's going to work so far. Right now I think that's my best bet. Man, if I would have thought about it, I would have used 5 minute epoxy. That would have worked perfect. And if the hot glue doesn't hold, I'll go back and re-glue it with that. We'll now move to this piece, do some cuts on it, and then I'm going to make the dispenser for this. And so I'm thinking probably somewhere around there. Now I'm just gonna kind of sand out my cut. Now using some leftover PVC that I had from the steampunk refrigerator, I'm gonna heat this plastic up and bend it around so that I can make these look like iron straps that hold the uh, tube down. Once I've bent those around, I will trim them down to the right size so that they fit along the sides of these very easily. Then I'm going to mark my tube and just use some of that uh, PVC glue to glue these down. I just want to make sure I measure out the right distance so that they comfortably fit where I want them to go. piece of copper and some fittings and a T fitting. So using some copper tubing and copper fittings, and you can get these at your local hardware store, and I'll put a list below in the description of all the uh, parts I used in this, but this will help add some decoration to the uh, coffee maker. So once I've figured out where I want these, I'm going to cut some half inch shark bite tubing that can be basically glued to the side of the tube, three pieces, and I can cut those and glue them down and then the copper pipe will fit directly on top of these. Should work well. looking kind of odd but odd's going to be okay i think this is gonna this is gonna work so i decided i wanted to move the elbow to the other side because i just think it aesthetically looks better so i re-glued that over there and that'll work fine now this is where i start masking out the coffee maker and I'm using some quality 3M uh, painters tape and this makes a big difference and you don't want to scrimp on tape and you don't want to scrimp on time. Take your time and be very accurate with this because this makes the biggest difference in a quality job. So make sure that your cuts are right and that you've kind of rubbed everything down so it's going to hold well. 
I even did the, the control buttons, everything on this so that it's ready for paint. I also took a little bit of naphtha to wipe down the plastic. This will help get it prepped and ready for paint. Now here I'm using some Rust-Oleum copper color paint. But I want to remind you that if you're using more than one paint, always buy the same brand. That guarantees that it'll work with each other. Also, do very, very light coats. Take your time and come back and spray several coats rather than trying to dump it all on at once. Well, it's dried overnight now and the paint is dry. It looks good. Unfortunately, today is a really rainy day, so I'm hoping I can get out and still do some work on painting this, but uh, otherwise I may have to come up with another means. So, but I think I'm going to start kind of masking out some of this and see what we can get done. So I think one of the first things I'm going to want to do is test the paint to see how well that holds up. Do a tape test on this. Well, I think we're okay. I think we'll be all right with it. Doing a tape test is really important because if the paint peels, you've got a serious problem. So you want to make sure that you can put tape all over this again, remasking it out and know that the paint will stay on. Now because it's a really rainy or drizzly day, I'm going to paint under the eave, but I'm going to leave the camera inside to protect it. It was dry enough and no rain that I was able to uh, get this far. I'm going to start taking the tape off of this. And this is where the real test of whether you prep this thing right will show. Yeah, I, I think this is, this is going to work. So after getting everything unmasked and making sure the tray, everything fits fine, I'm really pretty happy of how this is all coming together. Um, one of the things I'm noticing with this that I'm excited about too is I want to make sure that the upper tray, I think I want to put a cool looking handle onto that and that could be something that will really add a lot of, of class to this as well. I'm going to pull the last piece of tape off of the water level on the side of this and then I'm ready to start doing some of the finishing touches on to this. One of the things I think that would really add to this would be to put a lid on this. So I found a lid that'll fit on that. I'm going to add a piece of wood to the bottom to make it fit. I'll go out and spray this with some of the gold color. Now I took this brass fittings and I took it apart to glue this on. That was actually a mistake because you really need to just make sure you fit everything the way it should and just clip right on. I think I moved stuff too much and it was a bigger pain doing it this way. That looks pretty cool. I like that. Look, check that out. That's, that's looking pretty neat. I think we can make that work. Very cool. Now taking the lid that I found and then drilling a hole in the center of that and I cut a piece of wood, sprayed that black and I'm going to fit a bolt up through it and a knob that I picked up from the hardware store which is a brass knob, I'll screw that down on it, should make a pretty cool lid for this. So that should work just like that. So. It gives a nice little lid, kind of locks that down. I like that. So we're going to use some of these. Now the next piece I want to do is I want to add some what looks like rivets around this. I'm going to use some upholstery tacks 
and these are a dark bronze and using a small drill bit I will drill around the sides of all the material that looks like brass straps and only have to drill in about a quarter inch because I'm going to trim these tacks down to be shorter and just glue them into place. So once I've drilled those I also want to come around the front of this and I want to be careful as I drill those careful as in I don't want to drill into the parts of the coffee maker that actually hold the uh, cups in there. I'm gonna get the hot glue gun hot again which it is and I need a set of clips and I'm gonna use the dark the dark rivet and because I'm only going about a quarter inch in, I'm going to trim these tight, like that. It's looking pretty cold, plus with this. Alright, so what's next? So I'm going to go back into my computer and using my $50 vinyl cutter that I found online, I'm going to cut the logo for my steampunk collection. Now using an old broom handle, I'm going to cut this down to about 2 inches and drilling a hole down in it to handle a screw, I'm going to use my sander and start shaping this to just be a nice looking antique style handle. I'm going to use a torch and scorch and burn a little bit of this wood. I love what that does to the look of it. And once you take that, add a little stain, that gives a really cool antique look to it. For me, this is one of the best parts of the entire build. Tastes better with steampunk. Thanks for watching. Check out some of these other steampunk videos, and I'll see you soon.